Muslims here, 450, to remember the people in Bosnia. Do you have a message for them? People still here are starving, people still here are cold, people still here are being killed. After five or six months, we had our utility restored. We don't know how long this will last for. Can you walk us through the day that you actually escaped? It's a uh... I think as a kid, you, you don't really realize uh, what's going on. It, you just see this storm of uh, people running around. I uh, came to Canada in 2000. Prior to that, I, I had a quite long journey. Uh, I went to high school here, to university. So this is really where we uh, call our um, home. Um, of course, there's other places that we call home, and the one that's really dear to our heart. Of course, Srebrenica. I tried preparing for this, trying, hoping not, that I'm not going to cry, but <clears throat> it just brings a lot of uh, emotions and memories. <clears throat> During that time, like a young kid, you know, we had lots of fun, lots of friends doesn't matter which religion was and who was, we are friends, we had together, we were celebrating our Eid. I went to their holidays, celebrate with them their holidays. All you really think about is, oh, I just want to play and play with my friends and you have this wonderful family that's protecting you. And I was the youngest grandchild, so I was sort of the, the spoiled little one. Birthdays, you know, weddings, everything. But 1992, everything started turning around. The Republic of Bosnia Herzegovina today, with the Serb-led Yugoslav army shelling the historic southern city of Mostar. City by city, get occupied and get blocked. People couldn't move. As a kid, you don't really know uh, what war is. You have never seen. Uh, pictures or really heard anybody talk about war. The night before April 16, my dad and my mom, uh, they were a little bit fighting. So my mom, a year later, told me that um, the reason was that my dad kept telling her, you need to take the kids because this does not look good. Some people try to escape, try somehow to, to get out like arranged buses to get, you know, women and kids out. You know, we stayed behind. We got on the bus and uh, my father, he came onto the bus, hugged us, said goodbye, and he came another time onto the bus and said, if I ever wronged you in any way, to forgive. Because he might have had the feeling that this was the beginning of a conflict, of a war. 
That was really the last time we saw him. <laughs> and basically what you see here is very typical of what we've seen all along the road. Now in those two dozen vehicles you've probably got a hundred or so, maybe a couple of hundred people. Now people have come over with, with whatever they could carry, whatever they could quickly put on their tractors in their cars. The women, many children here who are very tired. We continued our journey from there uh, to uh, Slovenia. Uh, kids and women getting off the, the buses and uh, they said yes please step into these trains. They're stepping into the trains, getting off the trains. Kids, women, nobody really knows what exactly is going on. They don't even know where they're going. We stayed in a small army camp uh, as refugees for about nine months. What was very emotional for me at that time is um, there would be some men who would be able to, who were able to escape the Bosnian war and uh, they would come to the center, to the refugee camp and visit their wives and kids. It, it was quite emotional for me to see these kids, um, you know, call their dad and uh, I would just sit there and watch. Can you walk us through the day that you actually escaped? It's... Uh... Three thousand Muslims were murdered and their bodies hurled from the bridge into the River Drina. We knew it, what happened in, on the River Drina when people trying to escape, guard from the bridge, shooting people down on the, down the river in a boat. But I took a risky 50-50 praying I'm gonna survive. It was arranged that day at noon to sit in somebody's car. You don't know who is car is gonna stop beside you, you have to be that specifically on that time. And they drive you to main river on Drina. When I came to the river, so many people there still, like, where they come? Like, I see around in bushes, people there, people there, family there, young people, women with kids, sit there and wait. And they took us over the Drina, luckily we crossed it over. I never had a contact for those seven months when I was in Birna. No contact, no phone, no nothing. They didn't even know that I'm still alive. From Slovenia, that's my first contact from Slovenia. That, you know, I was grieving why I left you guys. And they say, thanks God you, you know, saved, don't worry. That day when we started seeing things on TV, it, it was a, a complete uh, chaos. People started uh, calling, uh, did you see what is going on, what is happening? Started calling our cousins, our family members. At, at that point we realized that uh, they most likely were dead. Some here already bloodied. And this man... My uncles, my everybody, Whoever left in Srebrenica, I had two brothers, I had two sisters. Knowing that time what happened was very, very hard, hoping that we see them, everybody, you know, on the other side, safe and, 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 but most of them couldn't make it. When you hear the number 8,300 plus uh, were executed in that time frame of uh, uh, four or five days. I mean, mostly men and uh, boys and hundreds and hundreds of women were raped and they've experienced uh, torture. 
they're saying, oh, Srebrenica has fallen, the city has fallen, uh, everybody is dead. How many family members did you lose? I lost about 50 plus family members, somewhere about 80% of my family was executed. In Tuzla, women carried a banner with the names of some of the 10,000 men who vanished in Srebrenica exactly three years ago. When I go to Bosnia and, uh, and uh, I had my family, my father and, and mom bury out in a tiny village, every time I go, I, you know, go to clean that and cut the grass and and every time you go it's every time you find something different you know few bodies on head there they discover you know mass grave on it's all around the villages you know and even I had to some point tell myself to to go to to visit those my graves, just to walk over that piece of land, it's hard. Just thinking, you want to step on somebody's bone. The remains of my father uh, had been identified in uh, a mass grave. It was only. Uh, partial identification so they were able to find only partial remains of his body now the reason for that is that the perpetrator what they had done is when they killed him they buried him and after some period they came back uh, trying to hide the evidence in my case my father actually was executed in a, a school uh, with hundreds of other men in a, a small nearby uh, village that was called Kravitsa and um, Imagine a field of garbage that we see in these uh, days and you have these bulldozers, you know. So picture instead of garbage, uh, humans, you know, excavate them, grab them with the, the, the bulldozer and move them to another place and another place and then bury them again. And once they've reburied them, they will do the same thing again over and over to move them to another place. Future generations need to know about this, uh, that something like this should never happen to anybody anywhere. I mean, take into consideration that this is the largest killing after the Second World War in Europe. I'm just thinking about those kids who are orphans, who've been left without uh, one parent, both parents, um, you know, giving them a better future, uh, giving them an education, helping people rebuild their houses, resettle down uh, in their uh, hometowns. And I do actually recall we also had the Islamic Relief uh, in Germany uh, where we would be uh, helped, uh, gifts would be given to us. Uh, we will get close. Uh, so it is very important. Even a small donation is very important. Uh, just to bring some, uh, a smile to a person, a little kid, just so they know that somebody thinks about them. In my situation, I remember my, my, my kids when they escaped us in Bosnia and were in Slovenia that time. They depended on somebody's help to bring a piece of bread and a liter of milk, you know, to be able to access. You never know who needs that help tomorrow. Somebody's hungry and we depend on today my help your help and everybody else help, you know, whatever, money, clothing, medical supplies, water, clean water, anything which to necessary for life today to have. It's very important to donate 
to our organization such an Islamic relief. That's it.